Dying in that condition, what will happen? The other day I was speaking in the UK at a convention that was entitled Social Media. And the whole convention, few days, almost a week, was all about social media and its use. Because you know we are now living in the age of social media. And you know one of the interesting factors is, when we read the Qur'an, Allah doesn't leave out anything. You know that. Allah doesn't leave out anything. And Allah says that on the day of judgment, He's just going to give you your own book. He will give you your book of deeds that you are writing right now. Right now we are alive and breathing. When you're alive and breathing, what are you doing? You are writing your book. When you are writing your book, let me explain something to you. You can change and delete and add and subtract because Allah has taught us tawbah. The minute I say, oh Allah, forgive me. I was wrong. What I did was wrong. I don't want to do it again and you help me and I regret it. Allah says, you know what? Your sin is wiped out. Immediately shaitan comes to you and says, no, 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 no. Your sin is not wiped out. It is a bit too big. That's another problem. Shaitan made you commit the sin. When you turn back to Allah and Allah forgave you, he starts making you doubt the mercy of Allah, which is a bigger sin than the initial sin because now you're doubting the quality of Allah and one of his names. So what happens? Allah Almighty will give you your own book. You can write it now, delete, add, subtract, whatever. Add good things and delete bad things. May Allah make it easy for me. When you're given your book, you will be able to see everything you did. You cannot deny anything because it's there, your deeds. Imagine someone showing you CCTV of you and you know you did this. And they say, but why did you do this? You can't come and say, I'm not the one. Like they would normally say, this is doctored. It's not doctored. This is you. May Allah grant us forgiveness. And then Allah will say to you and I, I want you to judge for or against your own self. That's what Allah will say. Here's your deeds. You did them. Have a look at them. Go through them. And I want you to judge for your own self. Where do you think you deserve to go? Subhanallah. I want you all and myself also to think to ourselves for a moment. I know what I've done in my life. I've done so many things. I've even forgotten what I have done. If I tell you and you're about 50 years old, that look, tell me what you've done in your life. You're going to say, you know what? I can't even remember. Astaghfiruka lima la a'lamuhu. Astaghfiruka lima la a'lamuhu. I seek your forgiveness, O Allah, for that which I don't even know that I committed in terms of sin. Subhanallah. Do you get that? So it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor upon us that he allows us to chop and change and to say, Oh Allah, what I remember, I seek forgiveness of. What I don't remember, also I seek forgiveness of. But let me have a good book. When you give it to me, I need to have good deeds. I need to have good deeds that are bonus from you. When you seek forgiveness of Allah, Allah says all the bad, I convert it into good. Seek forgiveness. And when you seek forgiveness, have hope in the mercy of Allah. Learn to smile when you think of the mercy of Allah and learn to be concerned when you think of how bad you and I have fared in real life. We are weak. We are insane. One bonus I have and you have is that as believers, I don't think a single believer who says La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would ever sin in defiance of Allah they would only sin out of human weakness, not defying Allah. What's the meaning of defying Allah? Going to war with Allah. You say, you made this thing haram. I'm going to show you, I'll do it. What are you going to do? Astaghfirullah. A believer will never do that. Never ever. Am I right? If you are sinning, why are you sinning? It's human weakness, right? Isn't that a bonus? Which means... I still worship Allah alone. I consider what is haram as haram, what is halal as halal. There is a sign of qiyamah that people will start considering haram, halal and halal haram. Sign of the hour. May Allah protect us from it. If something is haram, it is haram and you don't need to justify it. If you're doing it, you can just say, oh Allah, forgive me. I'm weak. I've done this. I don't want to do it. I will not do it. I'll try my best to stay away from it. Forgive me your mercy. You, know, you stand a chance. It's the mercy of Allah. But my brothers, my sisters, if you receive your book on that day and you haven't sought forgiveness, فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهُ There is no one to blame besides yourself. No one. 
That's why the Prophet ﷺ used to seek forgiveness every day. So many times, 70 times, up to 100 times a day. He didn't need it. But for us to learn from that. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. Do good deeds. Increase your good. Cut the bad. Cut it. Chop it out. You can. You can do it. You don't need to commit adultery. You don't need to watch pornography. You don't need to take that weed. You don't need to be on drugs. You don't need to consume the alcohol. You don't need to visit the parties and the raves where haram things are happening. You don't need it. It does not help you. It will not help you. If anything, it will actually take away your true contentment. You need a life with Allah. You need to settle. You need to understand good things come to those who are disciplined. Why does Allah have five salah compulsory at specific times in a specific way? Because of many reasons. One of them is he wants you to be disciplined. If you want success in this world without discipline, it is not coming. So Allah says, I'll give that to you as a bonus. I just make five salah farad for you. As a bonus, you already have the ingredients of being a successful person. What is the discipline? The discipline is I get up for Salatul Fajr. My discipline. Get up for Salatul Fajr and breathe the air out there and see how focused you feel for the day. Unfortunately, many of us, mashallah, we make Fajr. I'm also weak. Go and sleep after that. Mashallah. Sometimes. It's not haram to sleep after that, but be disciplined. Get up for your day. Allah wants you after Salatul Isha, go home. Allah wants you to spend with your family, your children. May Allah bless us all with good children. Many of us haven't spent time with the kids before you know they're old and they're big. Who brought them up? The, the environment out there which is quite challenging. It has all sorts of habits and everything going on. Before you know it, your child is already 15, 16 with all the habits in. And then you say, come here. For the first time in your life, you want to sit with them? It's not fair. You should have been involved from a young age. Listen to the Quran, hifd, say good stories, tell them something, listen to what happened through the day, praise them. Many of us never ever praise our children. We don't even say, well done, mashallah. We only want to pick on them. In today's world, you've got to do the opposite. You've got to praise them where they've done right. And yes, when they've done wrong, you correct them. I'm not saying no, but if you haven't praised them where they were right, they will not take a correction from you. They won't. When you're teaching a child and you say, well done, mashallah, well done, you're doing good, you're doing good. One day when you say, you know, there's a small little thing you need to correct, they'll correct it. They know. May Allah grant us the ability, my brothers and sisters, to focus on our own sins. And may Allah make us such that when we look at other people, we see good people and we're encouraged to, to do good. People lie, so they think everyone lies. No, there are some people, a lot of people who are so truthful, they wouldn't lie. There are so many people who wouldn't commit the sin you are committing, they wouldn't. A lot of the people you see around, they wouldn't do what you may be doing. So don't just look at others and presume. Because that is also a trap of shaitan. He makes you start thinking, no, no problem. You just, you know, it's okay. You one of them, they're all doing it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant goodness. There are sins that are prevalent, that are out there. One that comes to my mind right now is the issue of weed. Many people say, no, no, it's okay. It has health benefits. We know of the health benefits of the medicinal aspect of some of what the extract may have. We know about it. And yes, there may be permissibility to use it like other medication. You cannot abuse even your normal painkillers. Even though that's a, a drug that you might get at a pharmacy. If you're abusing that, you're still wrong. You're still considered an addict. Because that, those are also drugs, aren't they? So it doesn't mean you justify the abuse of something just because it has a medicinal property. When it is extracted in liquid form or something. No, I'm here talking about the social use of this weed. Trust me, there is no chance that that is permissible. I can go one step further. You need to, my brothers, out of love, I'm saying this love for the deen of Allah. I'm going to say something. You need, you need to quit smoking. You have to. Minimum, I'm talking of normal cigarettes here. Minimum is 
cut it down only for the sake of Allah. That's the minimum. Imagine if you had 20 a day and you say, Ya Allah, I've cut it down for the sake of you, for your sake. My health, my... I remember an old man I used to talk to and he used to ask me, what's the ruling on smoking? I said, well, I, I, according to what I know and what we've learned and what we understand from the Quran and the Sunnah, the amana of the body, you're not allowed to harm it in any way. So this is not permissible. You know what he says? He says, I am so old. He was 80 something. He says, and I've been smoking since I was 20. I'm not dead yet. That's, a, that's, that's an exception to the rule. It's not the general rule. Look at the others. Imagine when we, and I'm going to end on this note. When the coronavirus hit us initially, the, the variant was much stronger than now, right? You know that. I know it. Now we're fortunate, alhamdulillah, it's gone much lighter and almost, inshallah, bi'ithnillah, by the power of Allah, eradicated, I hope. My brothers, my sisters, I want to tell you something. A lot of people quit smoking because they were worried about their life. Suddenly, but the smoking itself, if it was a good thing, would you have ever quit it? No. So why are people saying, no, if you're a smoker, if you're an alcoholic, if you have this and that, these are conditions that make it worse. So they quit and they actually gave up because that was Allah telling them, giving them a chance to say, just quit. I want to tell you, give it up for the sake of Allah, Omicron or Nomicron. Give it up for the sake of Allah. <laughs> There's a disease or no disease. Give it up for Allah. Why do you have to wait for a disease and give it up for the sake of the disease? Give it up for Allah. Minimize it. Cut it down. I met a very good friend of mine a few days ago. And I told him, my brother, you know what? Cut down. Just cut down. I, you are my friend of mine. You know this thing. You, you know that you, you can't avoid the, the, the general cigarette. But cut it down. May Allah Almighty strengthen us all. I think what I've said is not unreasonable and I haven't hit it too hard. I'm just mentioning to you a reality. And I know many friends of mine sitting in this crowd here and I know that you guys do smoke. But I just want to tell you that advice, it stands. Today, tomorrow, whatever day, we should cut it down. We can, if we can eradicate it, wallahi, perhaps Allah will give you Jannah for that. And if you really, really are struggling, minimum is cut it down a little bit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of us and give us rahma and baraka. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Thank you so much for listening to this short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.